So this is uh, my new toy uh, made in uh, Hungary, Europe. It's called Delta Jet 2. It's uh, relatively new. It's only 43, less than 43 hours on it. I just came down, uh, I was making a big plan, but unfortunately at 4,000 feet uh, the wind was so strong and gusty that, uh, and very poor visibility. We are getting smoke from Alberta, so it would be not, no fun. So I'm making this video. Engine is a Rotax uh, 912 80 horsepower. This is specially made for aviation flying as dual ignition, which means two spark plugs for each cylinder. This is four cylinder, uh, two cylinders here and two cylinders there. A boxer type. Two carburetors on each side. Three blade power fin made in USA prop. Very good, quiet. I don't hear any engine sound, I hear the prop. This is a very large oil cooler. I have ballistic parachute, which is connected to this point. And eventually something goes wrong. I should pull uh, this lever up and everything, whole track, including me, hopefully will go as a unit and peacefully let me settle down. It will not be fun. This track has almost full uh, instrumentation. Integrated panel, which shows on the left uh, the speed in NOx knots. This is altimeter, elevation, that's uh, elevation above the airport, barometric pressure, RPM, rotation of the engine, and this is vertical speed indicator. If the needle is going up, so at five will be five feet per, mi per minute. Going down, the needle will put the, uh, pointing down. There is a exhaust temperature left and right side and uh, engine head temperature. Pressure, fuel, temperature, voltage, uh, hours. I put my clock because sometimes I want to know what time it is. And uh, this is radio. And uh, maximum, minimum speeds. I have transponder here. This is device which uh, let me be being seen by control tower on and another aircraft. They see me when I am flying around. Set of switches, master switch, avionics, auxiliary, which is like that for my GPS, landing lights, navigation lights, strobe light, and this is for pilot radio, and this is for passenger radio. Now my fun stuff, this is a GoPro 3, Hero 3. This is my main GPS, which I bought in the thrift store for $4. It's very scratched, uh, display so I replace it for about ten dollars and it's very good for navigation. I have another GPS which is battery powered only and just in case if my first uh, quit so I have second one. This is excellent device which is called Spot which sends signal to satellite and uh, people could, could watch me online. Like uh, I sent, when I press this OK button, it sends email home to my home email address and my wife can watch me where I'm flying. Basically, it rec records my position every five minutes. 
actually black uh, camera. And advantage of these cameras is that I can rotate them in the flight. This camera, I can do this. And I lock it in a position. I have switch here. This is carburetor, electric carburetor heater. This is excellent stuff because I am well experienced with frozen carburetor when I was flying north and it's no fun. This is my left pedal with brake here. Uh, hydraulic brakes for two wheels, back two wheels, and uh, this is steering for steering. Here, this lever is choke to during the startup, and it controls the gate in of both car carburetors. I use this uh, uh, foot pedal. Which is actually total. Radio. I have it set to uh, preset to emergency frequency and uh, and radio frequency which ever I need. Here's the fuel tank. This is position of light. This is drop light on the fender and position of light on the side. I have one feature which is uh, with uh, electric actuator which is motor with uh, the screw inside moves the suspension, the track suspension in a relationship to the wing from uh, the rear black ring to front back ring. And I show you when I move it, what will happen. When I activate the switch, fast or slow. So this device is moving. So if I want to go faster without uh, holding a bar to, against my belly, I move it. I move it. When I move the switch, I want to go slower. If I want to go faster. So far, I have a helmet with a microphone and earphones, which is very good to isolate any noise. I don't hear any noise from the engine, only just proper, like very deep sound. And one, uh, one jack is for microphone and one is for earphones. And uh, there is possibility for passenger on a rear seat to plug into the system and we can communicate. The radio is activated for local communication between a passenger and a pilot by voice. As soon as I start to talk, I can hear myself and also he will hear me and vice versa. If I want to talk to tower or different aircraft, I have to press button on uh, the control bar. And that's all. So. It's like a cheap Canadian tire visor. Works very good. I use this style for now 20 years or so, and it's very good. When it gets scratchy, I buy a new one. It's very easy. It costs about $15. I'll show you now how uh, the hang glider work. Uh, this is a follow-up, or I did similar video number 100. Uh, 76 on my list on my website if you see you can check my website and uh, right now there are 232 videos from around uh, 
the cam loops, plus uh, several thousands of aerial photography. It's, this area is absolutely spectacular. I uh, flew 15 and a half thousand kilometers since uh, uh, December 2012 in this area. 15,500 kilometers. So I show you how uh, this works. So normal during the normal takeoff, you start the engine. How how this works? So the wing is pivoting on the top all around. This is like a universal joint. If you want to go up, you push and you go up. If you want to go down, you pull and you go down. If you want to go left, you go right. If you go to right, you go left. If you go to go up, up and turn, that combination of the boats. So there is a, there could be confusion for ordinary uh, pilots by, uh, with the fixed wing, which they have steering stick on the bottom. When they go up, they pull, I push. So when, I go, when they go down, they push, I pull. So this could get uh, ordinary pilot in a trouble. But when you see how this works, it's very simple principle. You see the same like on a gyro. Gyro with a suspended stick, it's the same. <clears throat> if uh, anybody has any question, information on my website. This strike uh, is uh, very good. It's fun uh, to fly it. It's fast so it can move places and I definitely fly distances now. It has two seats, two seater, but it's illegal in Canada to have passenger only. I can take another either uh, flight instructor Ultralight instructor, not pilot instructor, or I can take another pilot, ultralight pilot, not regular pilot. Camera, GPS, GPS, uh, spot, camera, and there is another camera. And I made a uh, simple stick type of attachment. I found that camera mounted just on the end of a strut. I have it, which is about halfway or three quarter of the wing length. as has uh, the best uh, view of the trike. And the camera, I don't like uh, when people have camera on the end because then the picture is very distorted. Uh, because the uh, GoPro camera has very wide angle and it doesn't look very good. The best position for camera is to reverse it. Instead, the stick pointed backwards, pointed forward. But this doesn't work in a hang glider which has these solid struts, wing struts. If it's wing, uh, cable braced, it looks very spectacular because after that the camera will take about this type of view. It looks like somebody is taking a picture of you or video of you. But I solve it, I reverse it. So if you take a video from that side, this uh, the strut goes right over the face. And I extended uh, life by uh, extra battery, which you can buy in any electronic store, and plug it in. And uh, I tested it, it would give me about four hours of total time, which is good. Found this uh, stick, which is a GoPro stick, the black, black piece. 
is a little bit flexible, especially when I am taking off, the camera is vibrating. It's not problem with uh, Hero 7 because Hero 7 has excellent stabilization but it's a problem with any other cameras which don't have uh, stabilization. Okay, I forgot to mention the antennas. One, uh, the one is radio antenna which is the long one and uh, the bottom one is for a transponder. Square, one inch C-section and attach it, just tie it in uh, to the strut again and extend it battery life. This is Hero 7, excellent camera. I bought it uh, about uh, two weeks ago and I'm absolutely impressed. Uh, some people ask me what I'm using to mount the camera. So there is one which which I bought, bought, but I don't like it. It's very flexible. It's uh, not sturdy, but I got better result with this one. This is telescopic handle, which is used for painting walls. I tape it together and I made this type of, this is quarter inch bolt and I, I had these spare from my hang gliding, hang gliding days. So, but you, you don't need to, you, you can make some, you can put just straight bolt and maybe some piece of plastic under. And I put this under. Then into it. this this on you adjust the angle you mount it mount it on a wing so if you are flying if you have strutted like solid piece of aluminum profile supporting wing wing so you mount it this is the flight direction backwards and the best is to camera is downwards because it's self-balancing. This is the best, the sturdy, sturdiest, doesn't vibrate, very good, costs nothing. I bought it in a thrift store for I think three dollars. <throat> this was expensive, was about seventy dollars but it's no good. No matter what uh, your engine and wing and everything else in flight uh, especially during the takeoff a landing can start vibrate and uh, especially camera mounted on a long stick everything is multiplying so if uh, the wing is vibrating so the end vibrates even more so it's you will see like waves and it, it looks terribly so you have to isolate the vibration from the camera as much as possible. I'm, I'm using this material which is used in RVs uh, for in uh, uh, drawers so dishes doesn't slide in. So I cut, cut the strip like that and wrap it several times wherever I want mount wherever I want to mount this, let's say. So I would cut the strip, wrap it around, mount it like this, use tie wraps, tie it as much as possible, support it so it doesn't do this, use some sponge or something, and then wrap it with uh, duct tape and masking tape and whatever, so it's, it's sturdy. It has to must not move. If it's moving, it's no good. It has to be sturdy. Now I will show you how to mount camera first time.
first of all, first of all, what you need to know, where is the wing when you fly straight? So, in a, it's very important in a hang gliders or tracks, which is uh, the center adjustment device, you set it first and don't touch it. It has to be the same when you did your test in flight and when you landed. So basically what you need to know to find out where is the position, now let's say this bar when I fly straight, it's somewhere here. You never know because you can be here, it could be there and it's very difficult to say. And uh, the camera has to be parallel with the horizon and where, if it's not parallel, it, when you view videos, so you will be flying up a hill or downhill or whatever. So let's say if I am flying straight and I will watch uh, uh, my speed and elevation, but you don't need any instrumentation, you can eyeball it, you know that you are flying straight. So what you do, you grab the front tube, front tube and remember where the bar was touching your hand. So as I said, so when you fly in the air, no camera mount or whatever, when you fly, so that's level, that's level now. So I grab this here and remember where my hand was when it, I was flying straight and I grab it. So that's the position of where you move your camera. Now you come back, you land, and I use a rope or something and attach it so that exactly the same place. You can, let's say, like this here, mark it, whatever. So this position. So when you land it, you tie it secure uh, the wing in this position. So the distance from the bar is the same like before. And now you mount your camera and check it that camera is horizontal. And also the, what's the best position to tilt, rotate the camera, which is there is more room in front of the strike than behind. Don't take it in the center because uh, you, when you are taking pictures or, or videos and all that, you should have always more room in the direction where you are traveling. The same when you are walking, there should be more room in front of you than behind you or let's say in the center. So, and also on a camera mount, I mount it so the side camera, bar camera, so I can see there is 170 degree angle from uh, the camera. It's almost almost half globe in a horizontal plane. So I mount it slightly, not parallel, I mount it slightly in the angle, maybe, I don't know, 30 degrees, 30 degrees towards the center. So I can see the trike and uh, the view is much more interesting because when you are flying, the trike is moving, especially in a uh, turbulence. So this is moving camera. Basically, uh, the wing is moving, but it, whatever. So you can see a relative motion between the trike and, uh, and horizon. And uh, this looks much better than to put, especially when you are f flying somewhere in the prairies, there, there is no very little uh, features, like uh, everything in this uh, field or bush, all that. It's very important to to have something else to watch than, uh, and uh, you know how boring it could get to watch movie where you have uh, five minutes of nothing. Okay, so that's, uh, I think, that's all what I wanted to say. I don't know how this will look like, and because it's hot like hell right now. So, uh, I had planned to fly about uh, 200 kilometers, but I took off, there was no wind, like now, there is absolutely no wind. I went to 3,000 feet, and it was 25 knots. 
uh, wind, head wind. And so I gave up on it because I had to fly, I would have to fly in the Bali's and uh, the difference between my airborne and this trike. Airborne, I called, was called by called trike because the windshield was very low. So basically, airflow was uh, deflected right under my helmet. Plus, there was hole, big hole here for steering wheel. So all the air was coming. It was like a chimney draft. This uh, bike, this trike is very well insulated and I call it warm trike because even in the in winter, it's, if you can keep uh, your hands warm, it's warm. Not warm, but uh, you will not freeze to death. But uh, there is one uh, design problem in uh, this. Because this trike is very well insulated here, uh, underneath, inside, the static pressure which is which is a very important information to get static pressure which is the pressure of the outside uh, to get you proper reading of elevation and speed because speed is measured taking pressure from the air going through the pitot tube which is here, and compare it with the pressure which is outside of the track. But what's happening, <clears throat> the static pressure is uh, the open line which is originally behind the instrument panel. I change it underneath to look for improvement and it it's, uh, doesn't work. So what's happening that you get basically backdraft. You get because the air is moving and you can see it on my videos when you see my uh, winter jacket it's actually blowing from uh, my back so there is actually inside of the trike is a lower pressure than let's say few feet from outside and this makes difference of about 10 knots which is uh, about 18 kilometers an hour so 10 knots difference so Indication is about 70 knots, but actually flying speed is 60 knots. This information is very important, especially in Kamloops, where this, uh, uh, the weather could get very nasty. So you need to know there, is, uh, there, is mount there are mountains all around, and you need to know where the wind is uh, blowing through. And I use uh, the indicated... indicated... Uh, wind speed from this instrument and ground speed from a GPS and if instrument works perfectly so let's say it shows that I'm flying 70 but uh, GPS says I'm flying 60 which means I'm flying 10 knots against the wind if I'm indicated 17 here and 80 here it means that I have 10 knots from my back. So in this case, what I have to do, I get uh, 70 indicated actual speed. I calculated it, it works exactly perfectly. Indicated 70, actually it's 60. If this is 60, there is no wind. If it's 60 here, 70, which is actually 60 and I fly and ground speed is 50 which means there is 10 knots headwind so I have to always subtract 10 knots uh, the speed from uh, the indicated also uh, altimeter actually altimeter shows about 200 meters 200 feet higher elevation than actual compared with the uh, GPS and because uh, my transponder also works on the same same principle of uh, static pressure, so also uh, the control tower has uh, sees about 200 feet higher elevation uh, than I'm actually flying. So I'm uh, reporting this to them, but actually I am about uh, 200 feet lower. This is not big deal, 200 feet, but. It's annoying.
And I talked I talk to, tried to talk to manufacturer, nobody's responding. Talk to many people on uh, Facebook and all that. Everybody says, uh, yeah, this is in your head. And uh, this is not in my head. I talked to a designer also uh, from Florida. And uh, they, they told me, they gave me uh, how to determine uh, the strat position of static port. I didn't do test what they suggested. So I have two, two holes here from their pictures and uh, didn't make any difference so next time i will put a static static line somewhere in behind and i will see if this make any difference and uh, Revo, well-known uh, uh, manufacturer manufacturer of uh, the trike in usa it's like a corvette of uh, the trike uh, they made special scoop they made a special scoop on uh, the front to deal with the static pressure and uh, they are taking the static pressure from the scoop. So that's, it's a, I wouldn't say design problem, but a design overlook. It's for majority of people, it's not big deal. It is very big deal for me to flying in the camera because I need to know what's the wind direction and the strength in order to know how to behave around these mountains because it's, it can get really nasty.